There are certain things you can count on from me like clockwork. Like you'd almost damn near set your watch or maybe your calendar to it. A ranting about a certain Memphis mid-card piece of crap who continues to find a way to get himself on TV in 2020 damn three. Yes, you can set your clock to that. You also know that you can put on the calendar sometime each year, you're going to get some annual version of a Charlotte Flair sucks video. You absolutely will. And I wouldn't expect that president to stop anytime soon. Why? Because she does suck. Period. And you also know, especially over the past few years, you're going to get some form of a yearly cut the scene of crap video. Some type of video ranting about something pertaining to John Cena. And as you can tell by the title, this is indeed yet another installment in that Cut the Cena Crap video series. Now before I dive in and go too hard here, I know a number of you grew up with Cena as being your hero, being your guy. So he means something to you. Like back in the day, Hogan meant that to me. Although Hogan was better and a much bigger star, but whatever. Um, I also know that not only do you have that emotional investment, but, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And it can give you some rose-colored glasses. I understand that, too. Nostalgia can be a very limiting mechanism. You forget about some of the negatives or some of the potential bads because they didn't mean as much to you back then, or you choose to ignore them now because you'd rather focus on the good because it makes you feel better about life and where you've been and where you are at now. Again, I get all of that. You could be a fan of whoever you want. And frankly, I don't understand why it bothers somebody so much when somebody says, Oh, I can't believe you like that guy. They suck. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say what I want about who I want, and that'd be the end of it. And I encourage you guys to do that too. Get your panties in a wad about it. I'm not here to tell you you can't like John Cena, that you can't be happy that he's back, that he's you can't be happy that he's here on the road to WrestleMania to inject a little life into the product. Because I'm going to tell you right now, he certainly does inject a little bit of life into the product at a time that the company needs it. I'm not going to knock him for that. But now we're getting to this place, as we so often do, with the John Cena revisionist history and this shit needs to stop. And the first person that's guilty or the first person that needs to cut the crap is John frickin' Cena himself. I saw a lot of people talking about that promo segment with him and Austin Theory Monday night and raving about how great John Cena was. And it was the line that he bodied Austin Theory with. And I quote, I'd much rather be bald then have them pump in fake crowd noise for my matches because nobody cares, unquote. I know this motherfucker ain't talking. Of all the people in the world to throw that shot, John Cena's gonna be the one? Give me a goddamn break. The WWE literally spent years dubbing in fake crowd noise Cheers over his ass getting booed at big shows. This is not urban legend. This is fucking reality. We all know this happened for years. They would pump in heat during live shows. They would go back afterwards especially and they would fix how the crowd sounded to make it sound more favorable, Cena. So when he's talking about Austin Theory not being good at his job, and that's why they got puppet freight crowd noise. Well, John Cena, I guess, pop meat kettle, huh? Because your motherfucking ass sure would know all the hell about that, wouldn't you? And furthermore, you're going to sit there and shit on somebody for talking about they're not getting the job done. You were supposed to be a goddamn baby face, yet at least half of the audience, more often than not, would have a visceral hate your guts fucking reaction. So fundamentally, you were really, really bad at your job. And people could sit there and make all types of excuses for that. Well, fans just thought it was cool and they started hijacking it. At some point in time, that shit would have been fucking over. 
if it wasn't for the fact that John Cena really never fucking changed. So there was no reason for that shit to be over. If Cena was so goddamn good at his job, he wouldn't have been getting booed by half the building for a damn decade. To the point where WWE literally was doing damage control for years. Changing the narrative after he started hearing about, well, it doesn't matter if they boo or they cheer, but everybody has a reaction for John Cena. You imagine them saying that shit back in the day about Hogan is a baby face or Austin is a baby face or Rock is a baby face? Give me a goddamn break. So for of all people, John Cena to come back on his high horse, and by high horse, I don't mean Karen Jarrett or Aubrey Edwards. Not that type of high horse. For him to come back and talk shit about somebody not being able to do their job and the WWE having to pump in fake noise, he got a lot of goddamn nerve. As if anything, he set the standard for Austin Theory to fucking foul. But beyond this revisionist history, for frankly, John Cena himself, it's the fans, it's the wrestling media too. And just some of the things I saw posted about him over the course of the past week were just like, oh my God, give me a fucking break. I saw people posting about John Cena never actually buried anybody. Ask Bray Wyatt about that. Ask Rusev about that. Ask the fucking Nexus about that. He buried an entire faction in SummerSlam 2010. What the fuck are you talking about? Like sometimes too much was made about him burying talent. Just because John Cena beat a talent doesn't automatically mean he buried them. I will grant you that and that is true. But in some of these fucking cases, if you don't call it a burial, what the hell would you call it? Like that criticism doesn't just get pulled out of fans' asses. He didn't bury anybody. Give me a break. And that's how Justin Labar's dumbass tweet this. John Cena is one of the three biggest draws in WWE history. And that's how other people put John Cena in like the WWE star power Mount Rushmore. What the fuck are you talking about? Does anybody honestly think that John Cena is on the level of guys like Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Andre the fucking Giant? Like, look, damn it. I'm a huge fan of Randy Savage going way back, but I would never put him on the damn Hogan, Austin, Rock, Andre level. You see what I mean? I used to be a fan of somebody. Don't allow it to cloud your mind with really stupid opinions. And that's what it is. It's a false opinion. Well, could an opinion be wrong? It absolutely fucking can be. And this is a perfect example of it. Sit there and talk about he's on the Hogan-Austin level. Uh, excuse me, Andre the Giant says, What's up, boss? You got the fucking Rock, you got Triple H, you got Taker. I mentioned Savage already. How about Vince? You really think John Cena? There's a bigger money-making star than Vincent Kennedy McMahon? You're a fucking idiot if you believe that. I don't care who the hell it is. Like, to sit there and say John Cena wasn't a star at all is complete and total shit. To sit there and say that he's one of the three or four biggest stars and money draws in WWE history is complete and total bullshit. Complete and total bullshit. Because after all, he was on top for a decade. It was called the Decade of Doom for several reasons. And one of those was the large viewership decline you saw with the decade of him being at the top. But let me guess though, that's not his fault, right? Oh, it's not his fault alone. I'm not saying it is. But he was ultimately the top guy for a decade. Some of the blame has to go to fucking him. And then you're going to hear people talk about he was such a massive success moving er merch. And I think of this as one of those chicken and the egg kind of things. Yeah, he moved a ton of merch. There's no question about that. But he was also more overt than anybody else when it came to selling his merch to the point where you felt like half the time his appearances were only about moving merch. You get what I mean? Like none of the other talents went to those lengths to try and pock their shit. Furthermore, you can sit there and say, well, he moved more merch than anybody else. But the WWE also made far more merch for him than anything anybody else. They would make sure that his merch was featured more prominently than anybody else. They would have more supplies of his merch than anybody else. And some of that was because of the sales success they had for a sustained period of time. That's true. But again, kind of chicken and the egg thing. Like, did he move a lot because they had a lot available? Or did they have a lot available because he moved a lot? But let's not pretend like he's so head and shoulders above everybody else that ever moved any fucking merch. John Cena was so great 
But again, half the audience booed him for a decade. Like, you could have enjoyed him. But pretend like he's great. Oh, that's just people hating. No, how about that's just people pointing out that he was really shitty at what he was supposed to do. One of the other things you'll hear. Oh, he was so great doing all those make-a-wish things and granting all those wishes. He absolutely was. I commend him for that. That's a wonderful thing that he did. But you think he just did that out of goodness of his heart? That he wasn't getting paid for those appearances and shit? Come on, please. Give me a fucking break. Look. You could be happy seeing his back. You know, I'm not exactly mad about it because, again, this product needs some star power of some kind. They need something interesting. You know, to sit there and say, like, this WrestleMania card couldn't use John Cena would be a total load of shit if I actually tried to say that. But when I start seeing people talking about this goat shit, he ain't the fucking goat on any fucking level. Talk about he's one of the three or four biggest stars and money drawers in WWE history. Again, there's actually no factual basis to say that other than your own personal bias and fanboydom for John Cena. He never buried anybody? Are you fucking serious? And then for this dude to sit there and talk about somebody else not doing their goddamn job? He was so bad at doing his number one job, which was getting people behind him for a fucking decade, that half the audience booed him, and then the WWE would go behind him and dub in cheers. Let's be honest about who Cena was. He was an important talent in company history. He represented some good. He also represented some really, really bad and he left a bit of a stain of a legacy on the company. You can like him all you want, but that doesn't change the fact that he's not on that level. Enjoy him while he's there, sure. But don't pee on my leg and tell me it's fucking raining that he's one of the three or four biggest stars of all time. Give me a break.